आयो श्री वृंदावन श्री वृंदावन श्री वृंदावन जय श्री वृंदावन Let me say, open-hearted mood to receive the mercy of Sri Dham Radha Kund and Sri Dham Syama Kund. I think, uh, as always, we are a little tired <laughs> when we are on a yatra, but this is the place where we do not wish to be tired. Coming to Radha Kund and Syama Kund really means that each one of us should bring their container, the container of their heart, so that here Shimati Radharani, who is Karuna Bharatram, full of mercy, can pour the Radha Kripa into the container of our hearts. So. Uh, Please open your container and those who have brought no containers, <laughs> try to purchase your Krishna conscious containers on the marketplace of Sadhu Sangha so that you will get the proper receptacle to understand uh, or receive Krishna Bhakti. I'm very, very happy to be amongst you. And better I don't talk so much now. <laughs> we will sing a little. Because by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, for sure, the container to hold Krishna Bhakti is created. Uh, and you will need big containers today because there is a lot of Kripa, a lot of mercy in this holy dharma. So somehow get your containers ready <laughs> so that you will not miss a drop of it. Oh, 
Microphone for the harmonium, please. <laughs>
Hay gol. Gopa, 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 Gopa. Gopa, 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 Jayananda Sora Dula Giri Varadhari Gopal 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 Gopa, 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 Gopa. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Please sing louder, please louder. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
राधे श्याम 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 जय गौरनिथाय 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 जय राधा गोपीनाथ राधा गोपीनाथ राधे जय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा तिल प्रभु पदा जय राधा कुंज जय राधा कुंज जय राधा कुंज जय राधा कुंज हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा गीता कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे को प्रेम रानी हरे हरे बो श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु अपियर्ड इन दिस वर्ल्ड टू गिव द हाइएस्ट ट्रेजर ऑफ प्योर अनलॉयड लव फॉलोइंग इन द फुटस्टेप्स ऑफ द रेसिडेंस of Vrindavan. He comes in the age of Kali, a time of degradation, quarrel, hypocrisy. And he comes to give that highest of all wealth to the most unqualified namo mahabharanyaya krishna prema pradayate krishnaya krishna chaitanya namane gauratveshe namah shri chaitanya mahaprabhu manifested an extent of magnanimity compassion like no other incarnation had ever given Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered Rupa Goswami Raghunath Das Goswami and by their causeless infinite mercy Was that me? <laughs> Yeah. 
Before each lecture, I pray for someone to someone to speak through me. But. Through the grace of the previous acharyas, this mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has been preserved and distributed. His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, just broke all boundaries and distributed the mercy of Lord Chaitanya throughout the world. It is only by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas that we could be here today. The holiest of all holy places in all of creation. Rupa Goswami explains the greatness of Sri Radha Kund in his Sri Upadesha Amrita. Mathura is superior to Vaikuntha because Lord Krishna appeared there. Vindavan is superior to Mathura because Krishna performed his last Leela there. Govardhan Hill is superior to Vindavan because Krishna lifted it and enacted many blissful pastimes there. But the super excellent Radha Kund stands supreme above all, for it is overflowing with the ambrosia, nectarine frame of Radha and Krishna. Srila Prabhupada writes in purport Great sages say that Radha Kund is as dear to Krishna as Radha herself. Indeed, Krishna's love for Radha Kund and Srimati Radharani is the same in all respects. Let us begin by bowing our heads in sincere gratitude to Srila Prabhupada and our beloved Acharyas. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, because it is only by their causeless blessings that we have been allowed to enter into the supreme of all holy places. Sri Radha Kund, Sri Sham Kund. I would like to briefly narrate some of the prominent details of the history of Radha Kund and Sham Kund. Radha Kund, Sham Kund has descended from the highest realm of the spiritual world, Krishna Loka. It is described in the holy scriptures that in Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual sky far beyond the reaches of material existence Radha and Krishna were sitting together on a beautiful jeweled throne in a kunj in the forest of Vrindavan Sitting beside each other, Lord Sri Krishna's love for Srimati Radharani overflowed in his heart to such an unlimited extent that in this transcendental love he assumed Srimati Radharani's form and her emotions 
And then Krishna in Sri Radharani's form ran into the forest in separation, crying out, Krishna, 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 where are you, Krishna, where are you, Krishna? He was beside himself in ecstatic love. When Srimati Radharani saw her beloved Shamsundar in that state, the love of her heart overflooded beyond control. And Srimati Radharani, in the intensity of that frame, assumed the form of Krishna and the emotions of Krishna and was weeping out, weeping, crying, O oh Radha, Radhe, Radhe, where are you, O oh Radhe? The Sakis tried to pacify her in every possible way, but it was not possible. They did not know what to do. Only Krishna could pacify her. So they ran into the forest and they found Krishna, who was still with the form and emotions of Radharani. And they explained to him Radharani's condition in his form, calling out for him. Krishna wanted to run there immediately. Then a voice came in the sky and proclaimed that Krishna, if he simply chants the mantra with Radharani's name, Srimati Radharani will appear. So Krishna began to chant Radharani's holy name and Srimati Radharani appeared. Very shy, looking to the ground. And Krishna spoke to her. He said, Oh, my dear most beloved of my heart, I am your eternal servant. I am your eternal servant. Please punish me in any way you wish because I have made you cry. I have caused pain to your heart due to separation, but I also suffered the pain of separation. But just see, the tears from your eyes and the tears from my eyes in love for each other have filled two pools of water. The name of the pool that was filled by your tears of love for me will be known as Radha Kund. And the tears that I have wept in love and separation for you will be known as Sham Kund. And then Krishna said that, that your Kund is as dear to me as you are to me. Then Srimati Radharani bathed in Radha Kund and she assumed her original form of Radharani. And Krishna, who was in the form of Radharani, bathed in Sham Kund and assumed his original form. Thus, Sri Radha Kund and Sham Kund are eternally existing in the spiritual world. How these two most holy bodies of water have appeared in this world is described in the Puranas and by Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. It was a, <clears throat> during the month of Kartik during Krishna's manifested Leela, Prakata Leela in this world. Krishna was preparing to perform Ras Leela with gopis. The gopis were just making their arrangements to meet with Krishna in the forests of Vrindavan. At that time, the demon Aristasura who assumed the form of a huge bull sent by Kamsha came galloping into Vrindavan. He was an enormous bull. It was just the time of twilight when he came. 
the hump on his back was so huge that there were clouds hovering around it. The clouds mistook it to be a huge mountain. Aristasura was stomping the earth, causing earthquakes. The entire earth was trembling. He roared with such a voice that terrified everyone, including even the demigods. He pawed the ground, he raised his tail, his eyes were glaring, and his horns were literally, wherever he was running, tearing the embankments and just causing mass destruction. Aristasura was running like thunder, roaring, angry as anger could be. He was so angry, he was so beside himself that as he was running, he was passing urine and stool. This terrifying scene of roaring and earthquakes, seeing the demon coming. The Brijabhasis were terrified. Many cows and ladies who were pregnant had miscarriages. The Brijabhasis ran to Krishna in a very frightened state and prayed, prayed to Krishna to give them shelter from this inconceivably powerful demon. Krishna told Brijabhasis, do not be afraid, I will take care. Then Krishna stood before Aristasura, who was charging full speed. And Krishna, first he slapped his arms, just to show his prowess. And then just to smash Aristasura's pride, while he was attacking with such anger, Krishna very casually placed his arm on the shoulder of his cowherd boyfriend, Subal, and smiled. And then he just looked right in Aristasura's eyes and said, what do you think you are doing causing fear to my devotees, the Brijabhasis, in this way? I have come here just to destroy sinful miscreants like you. No weapons, just standing like this. This insult provoked Aristasura to such an extent. He was mad with fury. His eyes were bloodshot red. His massive horns were pointed right at Krishna. And he charged like lightning, roaring. And just to show Krishna his prowess, he raised his tail high up and scattered all the clouds. And he charged to Krishna. But our beloved Govinda effortlessly with his very soft lotus-like hands just grabbed the horns of Aristasura and <laughs> threw him like a piece of garbage 18 <laughs> steps away. <coughs> this really humiliated Aristasura. It was beyond his control. He was mad, insane with fury, roaring, screaming, running, charging, right toward Krishna. And Krishna grabbed his horns again and held them. And then with his soft lotus-like foot that the gopis were thinking is so soft, even when they touch the softest parts of my body, we may hurt them. With, his, with that same lotus foot, he kicked Aristasura. And Aristasura went flying down to the ground. And then Krishna kicked him and kicked him and kicked him and thrashed him and thrashed him, just like one thrashes an old, wet, piece of cloth. <laughs> uh, then Krishna pulled out one of his horns and stabbed him with it. Aristasura was screaming, roaring, hideously. His legs were shaking violently. 
His eyes were rolling, bloodshot red. He was vomiting blood. More and more and more blood just pouring out of his mouth. And he was profusely passing urine and stool. And in this state, Krishna sent Aristasura to the kingdom of death. Shri Krishna Bhagavan Ki! And what was so amazing to everyone who was observing is Krishna did it completely effortlessly, as if he wasn't even trying. It was play. The demigods showered flowers, and all the cowherd boys and the Brijabhasis, well done, well done. <coughs> Meanwhile, it was time now for Raslila. Krishna first returned to the village and then came out. And he met with gopis. Srimati Radharani told to Krishna, that, O oh, sinful killer of a cow, do not touch me. And Krishna replied, that, What do you mean? And Srimati Radharani said, You have killed a cow, a male cow. But that cow was a demon, Krishna said. He was a demon in disguise of a bull. And Sri Radharani said, yes, I know, but still, he was in the form of a bull. So Krishna said, well, what should I do? She said, you should atone for the offense, just as Indra had to atone for the offense when he killed a Brahmin. And Krishna asked, well, how do you suggest I atone for this offense? And Srimati Radharani replied that you should take your bath in all the holy places, in all the three worlds. And Krishna said, I will do, but I will not leave Vrindavan. I will bring all the holy places here to Vrindavan. Just see what I do. Then Krishna took the heel of his foot and pushed it in the ground, making an imprint. Then he called for all the holy places, please come. And suddenly, all the personified holy places appeared before Krishna. And Krishna turned to the gopis and said, See what I have done? And the gopis said, We don't believe that they're holy places. So then Krishna asked the holy places to introduce themselves. So each holy place was introducing you know, who they are, where they have come from. And then on Krishna's direction, they all filled up what is Shamkund. And Krishna took his bath. And after coming out of this wonderful Shamkund bath, Krishna told gopis that you have never performed such a pious activity as this, bringing all the holy places in the universe in one place to the earth. And beside that, you sided with a bull. So you should take your bath. You can take your bath here. And Srimati Radharani said, I will not take my bath in your kund because it is contaminated with the sin of killing a bull. <laughs> and then she turned to her gopis and said, let us make a kund more beautiful than Krishna's. But we won't you. And then Radharani found one of the hoof prints of Aristasura. And she took her bangle and started digging into that hoof print. And all of his, her gopis took off their bangles and they were digging and digging and digging just where that hoof print of Aristasura was until they made a very nice hole in the ground. And Krishna told Srimati Radharani that water, I will give you the water from my kund to fill yours. <laughs> but Srimati Radharani said, we will not touch your waters. 
With my thousands and thousands of gopis, we will get billions of buckets of water from Manasi Ganga, which is completely pure, and we will fill my kund with this. So they began the process of bringing water all the way from Manasi Ganga. At that time, Krishna looked at the personified holy places. And one personality who was the representative of all the holy places in the universe came before Srimati Radharani with folded palms and tears in his eyes and offered praise to her, the supreme goddess of all devotion, the queen of Vrindavan. said, our lives will only be successful if you are so gracious and merciful upon us that you give us a benediction. Radharani said, what is that benediction? The only benediction we pray for is please allow us to fill your kund with our waters. Srimati Radharani glanced at Krishna and then she turned to the holy places personified and spoke, please come. Then the waters of Shamkund overflowed, overflowed, crossed over the boundary and filled Sri Radha Kund. Seeing this, Sri Krishna was so very happy. He told Sri Mati Radharani that your Radha Kund will be eternally more famous in this world than my Kund. The same love that I have for you, I have for Radha Kund. And then Krishna said, <coughs> let us bathe in Radha Kund. And Krishna promised Radharani, every day I will come here to bathe. And every day I will perform my pastimes with you here. And celebrating this glorious pastime that took place at that, that very night, which is Bahurastami, the appearance day of Radha Kund. At midnight, Radha Kund appeared. Radha and Krishna performed their Ras Lila. It is described that Srimati Radharani was like lightning, and the rains of ecstatic Ras, transcendental loving affairs, were pouring from the cloud of Krishna. It is explained that Sri Radha Kund is <clears throat> the most holy place. Why is that? Because in other places in Vrindavan, Krishna's sweet Madhurya Ras is mixed with so many other pastimes of other relationships with the Sakyas, with his parents. Raghunath Das Goswami, in one beautiful prayer, he tells that all the holy places in Vrindavan, all of the holy places in Vrindavan, which are so sacred, are hardly a reflection of the sanctity of Sri Radha Kund. Because at Sri Radha Kund, exclusively, the pastimes of Radha Krishna are taking place. Save and accept those who are on the highest level of the associates of Radha and Krishna in their Madhurya Ras, no one is given entry to Radha Kund, most sanctified of all places. 
Govardhan Hill is the shape of a peacock. And in the northernmost point of Govardhan Hill, Radha Kund and Sham Kund are the two eyes of Giddy Govardhan. From 10.48 a.m. to 3.36 p.m., every single day, eternally, Radha and Krishna meet and perform pastimes at Radha Kund. For six hours every day in the Aprakata Lila, Radha and Krishna are performing their most confidential Leelas here. And the various Sakis of Srimati Radharani also created Kunds. There is a Kund of Lalita Saki, Vishaka Saki, Tunga Vidya Saki, and so forth. They are surrounding. And in the heart of Radha Kund is the Kund, is the uh, sitting place of Ananga Manjari. So these groves or kunjas of the Sakis are all around. And around Sham Kund is the kunjas of the Sakas of Krishna. Most intimate Priyanarma Sakas. But as time passed, Radha Kund, Sham Kund, and practically all the holy places of Vrindavan were forgotten. Because after all, after Krishna killed uh, Dantavakra outside of Mathura, he brought all the Brijabhasis back to Goloka. <laughs> Krishna's great grandson, Vajranav, son of Usha and Aniruddha, was made the king of Mathura by Yudhisthira Maharaj who at the same time made Parikshit the king of the world. So in the request of many great sages, Vajranab set out to relocate the holy places of Krishna's leelas and to establish deities and wonderful monuments in those places so that people could come, remember Krishna's leelas, and perfect their lives. But Vajranab had very difficult time. By the power of Yoga Maya, everything was hidden. So he sat on the banks of Yamuna under a Kalpa Briksha tree and cried. And then the Kalpa Briksha tree spoke and told him that all the holy places will be revealed to you. So he came here and he excavated Radha Kund and Sham Kund. But about 4,000 years passed, almost 5,000 years passed, and again, so many of the holy places of Vrindavan had been forgotten. That is the nature of time. In the year 1515, on Kartik Purnima, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Sri Braj Bhumi. <clears throat> During Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's two month visit in Vrindavan, he came to Sri Giriraj and performed the Govardhan Parikrama. After his Parikrama, he was searching for Radha Kund Sham Kund. It's in the Padma Purana. It's described and glorified as the most important confidential of all holy places in the scriptures. But no one knew where it was. Lord Chaitanya was inquiring from so many Brijabhasis but no one had any idea. He came to a village called Aritagram because he knew this was the area. 
and he was asking the local villagers. And they told, they said, the only bodies of water are here are two small you know, puddles in a paddy field that we call uh, Kali and Gori. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat under a tamal tree. And there, in his heart of hearts, he was longing for the vision of Radha Kund and Sham Kund. And from that tamal tree where he was sitting under, he could see two small ponds in an agricultural field surrounded by jungles where there were tigers and other wild animals. And he knew that that was Radha Kund and Sham Kund. In transcendental ecstasy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed in Radha Kund. The local villagers were astonished. Nobody ever bathed in those kunds. They were just two little ponds in a field. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was bathing in ecstatic love. Then he took the mud from Radha Kund and applied tilak in the twelve parts of his body. And then he offered a beautiful prayer which is revealed in Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Of all the gopis, Radharani is the dearmost. Similarly, the lake known as Radha Kund is very dear to the Lord because it is very dear to Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is most dear to Krishna and her lake known as Radha Kund is also very dear to him. Of all the gopis, Srimati Radharani is certainly the most beloved. In that lake, Lord Krishna and Srimati Radharani used to sport daily in the water and have a rasa dance on the bank. Indeed, Lord Krishna gives ecstatic love like that of Srimati Radharani to whoever bathes in that lake even once in his life. Shall I repeat? Indeed, these are the words of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Indeed, Lord Krishna gives ecstatic love like that of Srimati Radharani to whoever bathes in that lake even once in his life. The attraction of Radha Kund is as sweet as that of Srimati Radharani. Similarly, the glories of the Kund are as glorious as Srimati Radharani. Because of its wonderful transcendental qualities, Radha Kund is as dear to Krishna as Srimati Radharani. It was in that lake that the all opulent Lord Sri Krishna performed his pastimes with Srimati Radharani with great pleasure and transcendental bliss. Whoever bathes just once in Radha Kund attains Srimati Radharani's loving attraction for Sri Krishna. Who within this world can describe the glories and sweetness of Sri Radha Kund? From Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. <clears throat> Krishna was born on Janmashtami. Radharani was born on Radhastami. And Radha Kund appeared on Bahulastami.
also known as Krishnastami. And our beloved Acharyas explain that Sri Radharani is so gracious that on Radhastami we bathe her and on Bahulastami she bathes all her devotees. That is her gracious compassion. So it was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's special mercy that he personally revealed Radha Kund and Sham Kund to the world. Raghunath Das Goswami was the personal assistant of Lord Chaitanya's secretary, Swarup Damodar Goswami, for many years in Jagannath Puri. When Lord Chaitanya departed from this world, very soon after, Swarup Damodar Goswami also disappeared from our earthly vision. At that time, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami was overcome with feelings of loving separation. It was unbearable to him. In Jagannath Puri, he so much won the hearts of all the Vaishnavas for his complete humility. He was the very personification of renunciation and devotion. We know how he was born in such a wealthy, magnificent, and prestigious family. But he left it all. And ultimately, Lord Chaitanya found out that he was only eating the, the grains that shopkeepers could not sell, Mahaprasad of Jagannath, that was going, that was just thrown, thrown away in a pile near a gate of Jagannath's temple. And the cows would come and eat it. And they'd eat everything. But if any grains were too rotten and spoiled, the cows would spit it out. In the middle of the night, Raghunath would collect that. And he'd wash, out, wash it and just take the inner portion of those grains. And that's all he would eat. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard that, he went to Raghunath Das Goswami's place right at the time when he was about to take his prasad and said, I have heard you are eating nice feast every day. Why don't you call me? And Raghunath, no, I, it's not like that. And Lord Chaitanya immediately grabbed it. Although Raghunath Das Goswami was hiding it, he grabbed it and he ate a morsel. And Mahaprabhu became ecstatic. Swarup Damodar could not tolerate Lord Chaitanya. He said, no, no, you cannot eat anymore. That's enough. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I have tasted so much sweet prasad, so many cakes and so many sabjis, but I have never tasted anything as ambrosial and nectarine as that which Raghunath Das Goswami is eating every day. What was Lord Chaitanya's tasting? He was tasting the sweetness of Raghunath Das Goswami's love in the spirit of such renunciation. Lord Chaitanya was so very pleased with Raghunath Das Goswami that he gave him his own Govardhan Shila. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for years kept that Govardhan Shila and often kept it right on his chest. And it was always wet with his tears of love. Lord Chaitanya worshipped that Shila as the body of Krishna, and he was in the mood of Radharani. He offered his very life and soul, Sri Giriraj, to Raghunath Das Goswami. And he also gave him a Gunjamala from Vrindavan. 
the Gunja Mala represents Srimati Radharani because it is so very, very dear to her. Gunja is a seed that grows in Vrindavan and they make nice malas. Raghunath Das Goswami was personally witnessing the leelas of Lord Chaitanya with his own eyes. And the most intimate, confidential pastimes, Swarup Damodar Goswami and Ramananda Rai were with him. And Swarup Damodar Goswami would narrate everything to Raghunath Das Goswami. When Sri Raghunath Das Goswami and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I mean when Swarup Damodar Goswami and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared from this world, there was nothing else for Raghunath Das Goswamiji to live for. He decided, I will go to Vrindavan and I will take the blessings of Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami and then I will end my life by leaping from the top of Govardhan Hill. With that spirit of loving separation, he walked all the way from Puri to Vrindavan. Just before ending his life, he went to meet Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Oh, they were so very, very, very pleased to have his association. And when he told them his plan, they appealed to him, no. There is no one in all of Vrindavan that knows the confidential pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu except you. It will be our greatest pleasure to hear from you every day. Speak the glories of Lord Chaitanya. So Raghunath Das Goswami remained with them and every day spoke Lord Chaitanya's teachings and pastimes at the Radha Damodar temple, the six Goswamis would meet together in great love, performing Harinam Sankirtan, Hari Katha, and discussing ways to fulfill the mission of Lord Chaitanya. Rupan Sanatan told Raghunath Das Goswami, that Lord Chaitanya has given you his Govardhan Shila and a Gunja Mala. That means he has given you a place of residence at Govardhan Hill and he wants you to worship Srimati Radharani there. Thus they requested Raghunath Das Goswami to make his residence at Radha Kund. With their blessings, Raghunath Das Goswami came here and performed his bhajan on the banks of Shamkund and Radha Kund. Now please know, at that time, these were still just two puddles in a paddy field by earthly vision. They were no bigger than 12 feet by 12 feet in size. But to Raghunath Das Goswami, he was seeing, he was seeing the truth of Radha Kun with his spiritual vision. Beautiful steps made out of jewels and moonstones, and <coughs> magnificent kunjas of the most auspicious Kalpa Briksha trees. He performed his bhajan so deeply and so intensely he performed his bhajan that one day Sanatan Goswami came here to visit Raghunath Das Goswami and Raghunath Das was just chanting the holy names and remembering Radha and Krishna with such intense love, that he was oblivious to this world. 
Sanatana Goswami saw a couple of dangerous man-eating tigers just a couple feet away from him drinking water. And then Sanatana Goswami saw Krishna protecting Raghunath Das Goswami from the tigers. Sanatana Goswami explained this to Raghunath Das later. And Raghunath Das Goswami was very much ashamed that Krishna's serving me? This is shameful. The whole purpose of my bhajan is seva to Krishna. On another day, Sanatana Goswami came and it was the summertime. The sun was blazing. It was noontime. And here is Raghunath Das Goswami performing his bhajan, chanting the holy name so engrossed, he didn't even notice that the sun was blistering. But Sanatana saw Sri Radhika, the supreme goddess of fortune, standing herself completely exposed to the heat of the sun as she was shading Dasko Swami with her own veil. <coughs> Sanatana Goswami expressed that Raghunath Das Goswami, our bhajan is to give pleasure and service to Radha and Krishna, not to attract them to serve us. Please establish a bhajan kutir where you could perform your bhajan in a way that will be more appropriate. So Raghunath Das Goswami, on the order of Sanatana Goswami, allowed him to construct a very small, simple bhajan kutir for him. Previous to that, he would just sit on the bank of Radha Kund day and night. He hardly slept one and a half hours in a day. And oftentimes, he was just so engrossed in his bhajan that he utterly forgot to even sleep that one and a half hours. He simply wore just tattered, discarded cloth as a kopan and a chatter. And at a certain point, he would just take one little kadamba leaf, one little kadamba leaf, and just whatever little bit of chas or buttermilk would fit in that butter, in that, which is just like a palm full. That was the only thing Raghunath Das would eat. A little plain, simple, salty buttermilk. One time a devotee was thinking, that he's only taking one little tiny kadamba leaf cup of buttermilk. Let me find a bigger kadamba leaf. He wanted to do some seva. So one day he brought Raghunath Das Goswami for his daily meal, a, a, quite a big kadamba leaf cup. And Raghunath Das Goswami said, where did you get this cup from? He said, I got it from Sakistali, which is the village of Chandrabali. And Raghunath Das Goswami, he was so much immersed in meditating on being the maidservant of Srimati Radharani that when he heard that it came from the village of Chandravali, he took that cup and with all the buttermilk and threw it away and said, never bring me anything from that place. So then he continued with these little tiny kadamba leaf cups. That's all he had. Who can understand the devotional service of Raghunath Das Goswami? He is our prayojana acharya. He manifested the highest ecstasies 
of spiritual love. He was absorbed in the mood of the gopis, intimate loving relations with Krishna. In his chanting of the holy names, he was tasting the nectar of the spiritual world. In his Manasi Seva, he was actually participating in Radha Krishna's eternal lila in his manjari form. This was Raghunath Das Goswami's pastimes on the banks of Sri Radha Kund. One day he had a thought that Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya, he asked the Goswamis to excavate the holy places, to build temples, establish deity worship. He was thinking that Radha Kund and Sham Kund I should excavate them and make them something better than 12 foot by 12 foot puddles in a field. But when he thought that, he actually became ashamed that, just see my materialistic mental conceptions. I'm diverting my attention away from my loving service and my bhajan, thinking about these mundane things. But that day, there was a devotee of Lord Vishnu who went on a pilgrimage to Badrigashram in Himalayas. There he brought a large sum of money. He wanted to donate that money to build a beautiful temple for Badri Bishal. But the deity of Badrinath, Badri Bishal, appeared to him in a dream and told him, if you want to please me, go to Brindavan. Near Govardhan is Radha Kund. There you will find the great saint, Raghunath Das Goswami. Give that money to him to renovate Radha Kund and Sham Kund. So he did that. At first, Raghunath Das Goswami was hesitant to take his money, but he understood it was the will of the Lord. So he accepted it. And Jiva Goswami came. Jiva Goswami came, and um, they purchased this land and performed the renovations. They made Sri Radha Kund a very nice uh, balanced rectangular shape. And they were going to do Sham Kund in the same way. But there were some trees that had to be cut down. One night when Raghunath Das Goswami was performing his bhajan, he went to take a few minutes of rest. And the five Pandavas, headed by Yudhisthira, appeared before him and said, those, those five trees are us. We are living here on the banks of, Radha, of, um, banks of Sham Kund, meditating on the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Please do not cut us down. So they had to redesign the whole Sham Kund in a different way just to honor the five Pandavas who were standing as trees. Another time, Raghunath Das Goswami, he saw that the local Brijabhasis, they were washing their utensils and clothes in Radha Kund and Sham Kund. So he wanted to, to dig a well where they can do those duties without difficulty. So as the devotees were digging the well, they hit a rock and it began to bleed. So they explained that to Raghunath Das Goswami who said, you know, stop all work. And that night, Sri Giriraj Govardhan, Krishna appeared to him and told him that that Srila 
is my tongue, the tongue of Govardhan. You should take me, uh, take me out of that well and install me and make me a temple. <coughs> and to this day, we will all go there. It is called the Jiva Mandir, the Mandir of Govardhan's tongue. And anyone who circumambulates that Shila of Giriraja's tongue seven times gets the full credit of doing the full Govardhan Parikrama.